Anyway, um, so my story is a lot different than a lot of these stories. Um, I didn't go to college. I had no interest in college. I went to one class, and the teacher drove a POS car, and I was like, dude, I really want a Mercedes. So, um, like she was saying earlier, um, you marry your father, so I married two men. Both of them told me that I was never going to be anything, and that I was ugly, and all those great things, like my father. So, uh, my third baby, I delivered him, and my husband left me at the hospital and told me to get her on home. So I was a hairstylist at Fantastic Sam's, and I cut 23 men's hair in three hours, and I got great tips. But that wasn't going to be enough for me not to be poor, because I was going to be a terrible poor woman. I would not do good on welfare. I would not do good in the bus line, because I would not. So anyway, um, so he left me at the hospital. The baby was in ICU, and I sat there, and I remember thinking, holy cow, this is real. I already knew it was an ass, but I mean, you know, you kind of like don't really want to be a single mom with three kids working at Fantastic with the red tape on. So anyway, um, I just cried out to God and I said, you know what, God, this is going to be a good book. I am not going to be poor. It is not going to work for me. So I started laughing in the ICU. I mean, like, really laughing. I, for no reason. I know they're thinking, give her some value. Dude, she is having issues. Of course, they didn't know that I had just been challenged to get her at home. So anyway, I, I, I just, I, I literally thought, Wow, what am I going to do? So instantly, I got the message, get your real estate license. I flunked my real estate test twice. Uh, I am not a test taker. Just tell me what the test says, and someone else will tell me what it is, and then you know what, it's fine. So I, after I passed my test the second time, uh, or the third time, I don't know. I, I was friends with the lady that was taking, giving the test. She's like, oh, gosh, she's back. Anyway, so um, I got on my bicycle that night, and I rode the neighborhood, and I just had flyers made with my baby on the back, and, and his first words were, hi. And um, I would stop people and say, I'm sure you've heard of me. I saw all the houses in the neighborhood. Hello, I never sold a house. But I didn't even know that. So I sold 43 houses my first year. I was rookie of the year. And then what happened was I started just sabotaging everything I did because my family dynamics said I was not worthy to be anything other than my dad's little, there's, there's adjectives that I can say, but it can be being recorded. Anyway, so, um, but the great thing was is that I always had a mission and a passion, and that was my children. I was the mother line for my children. You come against my kids, we're both going to believe, but you know what? Don't touch the babies. So I, um, I just, I did everything I needed to do. I was the first Walmart door greeter. I stood outside the grocery store every Sunday with my children after church, and I would hand out flyers to my open houses and say, hey, I'm having an open house, I'm sure. And this was in a billion-dollar neighborhood. And the crazy thing was, no one else would knock on these doors because they were afraid of the other agents because the other agents, holy cow, they had St. John Knit and the Mercedes. I had a red Toyota Corolla, dollar pair of pantyhose, $7 shoes, and hand-me-down suits, but I was not going to be poor. So anyway, the, the point of that is, is that my children watched me. And my children, I have three amazing, incredible children that do not see limits. They don't understand that you're not supposed to stand outside of Walmart. Or this is Publix. A grocery store and hand out flyers. They don't understand limitations. They don't understand that you know the, the power comes from the parent's mouth to say, you know what? You don't deserve anything. Because out of my mouth it says, oh, no big deal. That's all. I mean, really? OK, we can do that. And so, for fast forward 2006, my husband came to me, which he left earlier, um, just a few minutes ago, we had a, we had a client meeting. But anyway, um, he came to me, he said, Shelly, do you want to invest in this company? I need $15,000. Well, at this point, I own my own real estate company. I also owned a real estate and mortgage school because I was going to teach realtors about mortgages because you go to jail. Whenever you write a house and uh, the mortgage gets fraud, you go to jail too. So anyway, I'm like, you know what? I've always been one of those people who said, hey, I'm noticing there's a pattern here. I think we should do something about it. So I started this mortgage school anyway, so Dominic came and said, hey, you know, it's $15,000, do you want to do it? I, I have no reference to money. I can make money so easily. I'm like, yeah, I wrote a check for $15,000. My very first meeting with my very first employee was a, another adjective that's customer. So anyway, he sits me down and he says, Shelly, everything about you, I need mean your hair and that wedding ring. This, this wedding ring is not good. It, this is my third visit, by the way. It is, <laughs> This is, you're, you're going to have to change everything about you. I sold business to business, and what you're doing is just not going to work. And I thought, holy cow, this is beautiful because something big is about to happen, and you are not going to stop me. If my daddy couldn't stop me, I'm a good chance you can. So I went home, I cried, I had a prayer partner, she came over, man, I started being like a prayer warrior. I know all the scripture, I can call them out, baby, let me tell you what, I got some knees in these pantyhose underneath this dress I got on, because I know one thing. That if it comes against me, you're going to lose because it already said I already won. So 
So anyway, so 2006, holy cow. Now our, I mean, our business is, I can't even tell you. My, my, my image is a pink jet. I want a pink jet. I want to fly over some relatives' houses. And some ex-husbands and like do the like, <laughs> thing. Like, oh my God, was that a pink jet? Was that Shelly? Yes, it was. <laughs> and my three children too were in there too. The ones that you said would never be. <laughs> So anyway, so now, like I said, we're in 27 states. We just landed the second largest healthcare uh, system in the country, and it took me two years to get this guy to call me back. And when he called me back, he said, "Hey, I'm in Omaha, Nebraska." I said, "Breaking news! I got a car. I will be there. You tell me when." In that meeting, he didn't come to the meeting and say, "You know, what's your technology?" He took me to a restaurant that was like a total hole in the wall, and he was watching how I treated the, uh, the waitresses. He tells me now. It, it, I treat them like they're my mom and dad. I mean, not my dad, because I mean, she's there. Like, oh, can I call family? Oh, God, I'm sorry. No. But anyway, so the way you treat the community will fast forward you so fast. The way you treat the person that's at Starbucks getting you the coffee, it will fast forward you because those people know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. So you can leave here and think, oh, I got this great idea. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Your entrepreneurial relationship starts with yourself in your personal life. It's not a thing that says, well, I'm going to be queen. I don't, I don't need a paycheck. Well, you know what? I never, I never worked for anyone because I'm too mouthy. I'll be fired. I'll be like, no, she needs to get another job. So I've never had a security of a paycheck. I make what I want to make, I, and I, I can make good money. Um, and I mean, it's just so fun. I, I, I have a very fearless attitude because I am really fearless. I don't, I, I always say, you know what? I'm, I'm in it to live in a tent if I have to. But I would reinvent the tent. I would make a sunroof. And I would put like some shoe holders on it and you know, make a little cushion where I can sleep so I wouldn't get cold. But the point is is that you're either in or you're out. You can't ride the fence. So when I started in 2006, I sent my real estate mortgage license back to both states that I held in my held I held, held my broker's license. Because you know what, if you're on the fence, see it's called chafing. Very unhealthy. It can cause a lot of other problems. So you either have to get off the fence or get on the fence. If you're on the fence, you know what? You're not going to get there because you're always going to have a safety net to go back and say, you know what? I mean, it's the, the tough things that I've done to build this business. I would have gone back and sold a house for twenty thousand. I can sell houses all day long, but no, I knew that something was so big at the end of the summer. When you take on the construction market like I've done, I'm talking the construction market. Hello, there is not many women, and if they're women, they're in the job trailer and they're organizing the job documents. That's what they do. I mean, they might have a title, but they're a token title. So here I am, this woman in the market saying, you know what, you know, let me just tell you, we're going to start building transparently. Really, are you kidding me? I mean, my very first meeting with a, a general contractor, they told me I was a minority, and I thought that was really funny. I'm like, okay. I had to go to a class. I'm like, wow, that's so funny. I mean, I'm the underdog? Okay. But I mean, and that company went on to steal all my technology. Honest to God, I just got a letter yesterday, they're trying to put a gag order on me. It ain't going to happen. Dude, write the check. You're going to bleed. I promise you. You stole it. I got the stuff. It says right here. There's no question. I already got it. You're done. And I mean, there's this huge corporation that I'm sitting across from. And I tell the guy, I said, when you sent me the letter that you're patenting my technology, I said, do you know the story about David and Goliath? Because I am David and you are Goliath. And you already lost. I'm just going to tell you straight up front. And they said, when I left the room, they said, honey, we do not want David and Goliath in the marketplace. I said, write the check. Because you're going to have to write the check. Because you can't do that. See, that's called copyright infringement. You're not going to be able to do that. But the things will, that will come against you, and you have to know that you're going to stand, and you might get the highs, and you might leave, and you might have to go do something else to try to figure out how to recompose yourself. But the deal is, at the end of the tunnel, whenever you're on that pink jet, and you do the flyover, I want to tell you, there's going to be a jet stream behind me, and they're going to say, I think that was a pink jet. So I probably don't have my five minutes, but that's true. Okay, so see, we have lots of different perspectives, right? And and what we want to do is really take away what.